This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. That's you. You're listening. Thank you. Maybe you're Justin Zellers or Pepper Geese or Carmine Bailey or brand new patrons, Alex, Lagala, and Vladimir. Yay! Yay! On this episode of DTNS, Google opens up the Play Store. Tom Tom puts AI in your car. And this was not the year of VR, but maybe next year will be. Same, there's a chance. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, December 19th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from studio brand spanking new, it's oh. Arlene. And I'm the show's producer, <laughs> Roger Chang from my same Rod- old regular Roger place. was so stunned by your amazing new studio that he was speechless there for a second. Well, you know, there is work yet to be done in the new studio we need a name, um, but otherwise, we are very happy to be here and Keep those happy names. to be back on the show. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Uh, let's see what quick hits are like in this new studio. <laughs> let's, let's figure it out. Bloomberg sources say Apple is working on changes to the algorithms that calculate blood oxygen levels on the Apple Watch. The hope is to use a software update to avoid accusations of infringing on patents by Massimo. Monday, we told you that Apple will end all of its own Apple Watch sales by December 25th in order to comply with an international trade commission ruling on violation of two patents. But the patents mostly refer to hardware operations, such as how light is emitted on the skin to measure measure blood oxygen. Apple thinks it can work around that with software, although Massimo has said Apple's hardware needs to change if it doesn't want to pay to license the patents. In the meantime, third parties can continue to sell Apple Watches as long as they are in stock, and the Apple Watch SE can continue to be sold. Hey, remember that Windows bug that automatically installed the HP Smart App after renaming all of your printers to be HP Laser Jets? Uh, that was two weeks ago. That Microsoft acknowledged it. I think it's longer that it's actually been around. Uh, finally, Microsoft has a fix. This weekend, it released a Microsoft Printer Metadata Troubleshooter Tool, which will uninstall the HP Printer App and restore your model information and icons to their correct identities, removing the HP LaserJet info. Uh, If you're an admin in an enterprise situation, you can run it for all your clients, and individuals can get it from the Microsoft Download Center, and then you have to run it from the command line with admin privileges. Comcast disclosed details about threat actors who breached one of its Citrix servers back in October, which included customer-sensitive information for quite a few people. In fact... 35,879,455 people from its its Xfinity product systems. Comcast says the scope of the customer data taken included usernames and hashed passwords. Some customers' information, such as names, contact info, last four digits of social security numbers, dates of birth, and secret questions and answers to those questions were also taken. Comcast started asking users to reset their passwords as they log in last week and has also started notifying users that their data has likely been compromised. Malicious actors have published internal data from Insomniac Games, the the Spider-Man game folks, uh, including its upcoming game release schedule and even some gameplay from the upcoming 2025 Wolverine release. Uh, The data also mentions a third Spider-Man game. We probably could have guessed that. Uh, A Venom game, a new Ratchet & Clank title. Uh, The attackers had apparently demanded 50 Bitcoin to prevent the release and uh, Insomniac didn't pay. So now it's out there. OpenAI created a new safety advisory group designed to fend off the threat of harmful AI and can override OpenAI's own technical teams. So the advisory group makes its recommendations directly to the leadership team, although OpenAI's board retains veto power. The company also updated its preparedness framework with a main purpose of showing a clear path for identifying, analyzing, and deciding what to do about catastrophic risks inherent to models the company is still developing. Yeah, adding uh, more layers of bureaucracy. That's how we keep ourselves safe. All right, uh, let's talk about this big news today from uh, Google. Google settling down 
Yeah. So Google has settled a lawsuit brought on by 37 U.S. attorneys general led by Utah to pay $700 million and make four changes to its app store. So $70 million will go to a fund for all 50 states that includes D.C., Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. The other $630 million will be distributed among users, depending on how much you spent in the Play Store between August 16th, 2016, and September 30th of this year, you'll get at least $2, and in some cases, you'll get more than that. Yeah, everybody gets 2 bucks, uh, and I would like mine to be in a $2 bill. I would like I mine I... to be $2,000. Yeah, I don't think you spent enough on the Play Store. Did I you? Didn't. Well, maybe you no, did. I don't know. No, no, no. But maybe you did. So, maybe yeah. I. Yeah, I'm only going to get the two bucks. I, I I used the Play Store, but I didn't spend much. Uh, here are the four changes that Google is going to make to Android as a result of this settlement to try to make everybody happy. They will make it easier to install and use third-party app stores. You can install third-party app stores right now, but it's a little complicated. So they say they're going to streamline that uh, so that it won't be so difficult for people to do it if they want. They'll also allow users to download apps directly from a website without needing to go through an app store. You'll still get a pop-up saying like, hey, downloading stuff from other websites can be dangerous. Are you sure about this place? Uh, but you, you'll be able to get it directly, which is not something you can do now. A third of the four things, they will let developers offer an alternative payment option alongside Google Play to U.S. users through something they've been testing called the user choice billing system. So this is still Google's own system. This isn't just saying everybody can use whatever payment system they want. Uh, you have to go through this billing system and Google takes 26% of the payment rather than 30% of the payment. Uh, so there's, you know, uh, a slight benefit to doing that way. And fourth of the four things they're going to do, uh, let developers mention other subscription offers to lower cost options available at other app stores or the developer's own website. So you right now you're not allowed to refer to that stuff. This is something that Apple uh, is going to face probably having to do based on their version of the Apple Epic lawsuit. Um, but, but Sarah, uh, these things are, are good compromises. I don't think they're enough to make Epic, uh, stop suing Google. Uh, at least Epic has said it is not enough. Probably not. Um, that said, um, I think that, you know, we, we're, we're in the era now where it's like, okay, uh, these, these app stores have been way too locked down for the developer community. And, you know, it, you know, Epic versus Google versus Apple, um, you know, that that is almost neither here nor there for 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 most of uh, the development community. I, I think I think what Google is um, is uh, conceding on um, is 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 really good. You know, it's it's exactly what Apple has had to do, um, you know, going from 30 percent to 26 percent. OK, not like a super big concession there, but um, but uh, just to be able to let the let the 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 ecosystem thrive is 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 a good thing. Yeah, the, these are good. I, I'm not I'm, I don't disagree with you. Uh Epic wants more. They want more damages. Uh, so seven hundred million is is what's getting chopped up here. Uh, Epic is suing for ten point five billion. So that's quite a bit more. Uh, and they and think the twenty six. I mean, they probably won't get ten point five billion, but they'll get more than seven hundred million if they win uh, and they keep going. Uh, mm -hmm. They also want that twenty six percent to be lower. Uh, so you know that's another thing that they want to push on is like you should allow us to use our own payment system without taking anything. Google and Apple's arguments in those cases is we are still maintaining the operating system, we're still maintaining the platform. So even though you're not going through our payment system, you should pay us something if you're getting listed in our store and we have to maintain the store, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, granted, if there's a third-party app store, Google won't make you pay the 26% because you're not going through. Uh, them. They, this is only for, for apps that want to be listed in the Google Play Store. Um, so Epic thinks that should be that should be cheaper. They probably think it should be 0%. Uh, and they want complete freedom to design and message their alternate pay payment options, which Google is not giving developers here, certainly not through the Google Play Store. So 
I don't know. Allowing users to download apps directly from a website to me is a huge step. That is something I've wanted to be able to do on my phone, just like I do on my laptop for a long time. So yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. excited for that one. Well, uh, let's talk about what you want in your next car, Tom. So navigation platform TomTom Tom announced it has partnered <laughs> with Microsoft to offer generative models in its automobile software. TomTom Tom says you'll be able to speak naturally to the software to control things like navigation, car system control, window control, other infotainment system controls, et cetera, et cetera. The system uses OpenAI's LLMs, Azure Cognitive Services, and Microsoft's multi-model Azure Cosmos DB. TomTom's open modular digital cockpit software will include this, and other automakers can also include it under their own software brands. Yeah. So this, we have voice control in cars already. Don't don't get us wrong. We're not trying to position this as like the brand new thing. Even TomTom has voice control. But what's new here is using OpenAI large language models. Um, we hesitate to say ChatGPT because we don't know. Is it we, they? We don't know if it's GPT four, GPT three point five, or maybe some other model. Uh, it's taking advantage of Microsoft's implementations, not OpenAI's. So it could be some spin on it. Obviously, they're doing Azure. Uh, Cosmos DB, which is multimodal. Uh, so that allows you to do some image sensor input and other sensor input from the car. But Sarah, I, I would love to be able to just not have to think about how I'm saying something, but be able to say like, hey, uh, play my audiobook from Audible right now and have it know like, oh, you mean the most recent audiobook? Let me launch that for you and start playing it without, you know, without having to go, um, uh, smart speaker, uh, Oh, Tell yeah. Audible to yeah. play uh, and oh, what was the book I was reading's name, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, listen, I, I use CarPlay in my car now, um, you know, because my car is compatible and uh, I'm used to talking. I mean, in this case, it's Siri because uh, I'm on iOS. I know how to ask for things that I know the car can do. Uh, the car can't uh, roll down my windows for me. That was like one of the things where I was like, whoa, I never even really thought about that. I never thought about the, you know, yes, um, hardware based. I can push a button and my window goes down or goes up type thing. <laughs> yeah, that's but I, new. But I never really thought about the idea that I can just say, hey, I'm hot and <laughs> roll down the windows, you know, or turn on the AC or, you know, a variety of things that um, I am used to doing that in my home uh, because I like to talk to my smart speakers, um, you know, and, 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 and there's another, uh, there, uh, quite a thing, uh, quite a few things that I can do because of that. But, um, but in my car, it's always been pretty limited. You know, it's like, uh, I can play a podcast. I can, uh, maybe it's really just sort of entertainment stuff, infotainment stuff. But when that turns into a, uh, oh, I can, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, change the, uh, settings, uh, the heat settings in the car. That's cool. I mean, you're not going to be able to be like, hey, uh, turn on my, <laughs> turn my car on and off or, you know, make, make uh, the, the, you know, my, me go to 90 miles per hour type thing. There are certain things, obviously, that it's not going to be able to do. But a little bit more of that just sort of natural, like, hey, I'm feeling, you know, a little cold. Maybe turn on the, you know, turn turn on the 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 foot uh, heater type thing. Um, that kind of makes the car more like a smart home, and I've never really had that before. Yeah, and and you can do all of that stuff right now. CarPlay may not be able to do it, but there there are certainly ways you can say like, you know, uh, a GM smart speaker. Uh, adjust the heat to 70 degrees what tom tom's doing is beyond that right they're saying we're not only gonna like tap in all this stuff and we'll see if they do remember tom tom's just making the software capable of doing it that doesn't mean every car maker is going to implement all of this but they might implement part of it and and the big advantage is not what it can do what it can control the big advantage is how you say it because yeah. it's going to be able to understand you without you having to phrase things exactly and I, when i'm driving 
uh, and I'm paying attention to the road and, and, and watching around for cars and making sure that that, that guy in the Lamborghini is not going to like run into me as he speeds around all the traffic. Uh, I'm, I'm going to want to not have to think about how to properly phrase something. I want to be able to just say it in natural language. That's what they're promising. I don't know. Do you think they'll be able to deliver on that? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to test it. Uh, I, I spend a fair amount of time in my car. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I think this is, you know, car house, um, a variety of places we have, uh, those of us who care about talking to our, our smart, uh, home devices, we have gotten used to being, you know, this is how you have to say it to make the thing do the thing. And, uh, that's not the end of the world, but to just sort of be like, oh, I'm in a bad mood, you know, in the car, be like, gotcha. You know, you need, you need the AC on a little bit. I don't, I don't know. know if it'll be I, that like, good I don't yet. even, I don't even really know, you know, how. It, but it, it's, it's more going just being out. able to say like, uh, it, it's too warm in here. Can you make it a little cooler and have it know like, oh, let me try just going down two notches exactly. without having to like say reduce cooling by 2% or whatever it is that you want to say. That's yeah. the key, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I feel like I'm, we're getting there with a lot of smart devices. You know, for example, I added some stuff to my grocery list the other day and it's like, I used to have to say it just so, mm -hmm. um, you know, and now it's like, eh, it's getting smarter. You know, I can kind of just like flippantly yep. be like, eh, I need Brussels sprouts. And they're like, Gotcha. Maybe that's um, a prediction for the coming year is that we are finally going to see these models show up in the Echo, in the Google Home, in a way that you can feel, right? And they, right. they all, all been saying they're coming and Apple's saying it's coming to Siri too. Uh, but if it's coming to TomTom, Tom, if, it's, if it's coming to uh, TomTom's digital cockpit platform, which lots of car users can use, that means it's going to show up in cars when you didn't expect it, right? Because you're not using CarPlay or Android Play. You're using probably some branded platform made that, that looks like it was made by the car manufacturer, but it's actually running on TomTom's digital cockpit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, folks, we had a great conversation with Wen uh, from Android Faithful yesterday, and several of you wrote in and were like, oh, I loved having her on the show. Have her on a bunch. Uh, we will. Uh, but you can also hear her more often if you listen to Android Faithful. Uh, every week, Android aficionados Ron Richards, Huen Tui Dao, and Jason Howell bring you the latest Android news and information. You can watch it live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at youtube.com slash daily tech news show or subscribe and get it right there in your podcatcher at androidfaithful.com. It's time to check in on the state of VR and AR. <laughs> it, it makes it sound like, you know, everybody knows it's on the calendar. Uh, <laughs> December 19th, that's every year when we check in on the state of VR and AR. Uh, but the reason we're doing it is uh, Circana Research came out with an estimate of VR sales, uh, VR and AR headset sales in the U.S., uh, estimating they fell almost 40% as of November 25th. Now, granted, that doesn't take into account the whole holiday season, so maybe that won't be quite so bad once they add in December, uh, but it's still much more than the 2% it fell in the last year. So we've had two bad years of VR and AR headset sales. Uh, put it this way, they were selling better in 2021 than they are now. The $499 MetaQuest 3 was an exception. Uh, it kept that fall from being worse. Sales of uh, headsets from October and November were up 42% over the same period last year, and that is almost entirely due to the MetaQuest 3. Uh, there was no strong headset release the rest of the year. Uh, the next best would be the Sony PSVR 2, uh, but that did not pick up a lot of market share. So we are no longer in early days, Sarah, it's it's middle days. We're 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 in the we're, yeah. we're in the noon time of VR and AR now, <laughs> uh, and yet 
We've got uh, news of a couple of new sensors from Samsung, a, a time of flight sensor uh, and a shutter sensor that will probably go in a Samsung mixed reality headset. Uh, we obviously have the rumors that Apple's getting ready and training their people in the store to sell the Apple Vision Pro for thirty yeah, five hundred dollars. January, uh, yeah, perhaps, yeah. perhaps yeah. certainly in Q one. Uh, so my question that I thought we should kick around is: Yes, VR is coming off two very bad years headset sales wise. Is it about to turn around? You know, I think I think the. If I have to be honest, Apple's you don't Vision have Pro. To be, but we appreciate. Well, <laughs> well, I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Um, Apple's uh, Vision Pro, thirty five hundred dollars expected first quarter of this year, perhaps January uh, this year, meaning uh, 2024. Um, but you know, maybe maybe even if that that slides a little bit, this is a big deal. However. This is not a consumer product. It's a developer product. It is something that is extremely expensive. This is not something you just casually pick up at Best Buy type thing. Now, um, what you have in the VR and AR world right now is um, a variety of options. I am a Quest uh, enthusiast. I have been for some time. At the same time, over the, you know, over the last, and even on this show, even with all y'all, but um, over the last few years, as as much as I've been really kind of, you know, gung ho and 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 bullish about VR, I can't really get people on board with it, you know, where I'm like, it's just the one, you know, it's it's the one app. It's the one app. It's so fun. All you have to do is just try it out. And people go like, eh, I don't want to do that. There's something about VR that is hard for people to get on board with. And I, I, I still think to this day, it's because if you haven't tried that killer app, you just don't care. You don't want but what it. What is that killer app? What's that one app? Well, for me, it's Supernatural. Um, because it's a fun VR exercise app that makes exercising fun. Yeah. That's my killer app. But 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 I I never cared about VR until I found this one app where I was like, oh wait a second, this is really fun, really really fun. You know, I've got friends, uh, Tom. I think you're a uh, part of that group. You know, who um, get together and play uh, miniature golf together. You know, there, there are all sorts of ways that VR actually does bring people together, or at least brings you into a fun world uh, that you could not experience otherwise. I am very in, you know, I'm, I'm all in on VR. However, I really, I, I have to say, it is just not a thing that you can, you can kind of like, casually say to somebody like, Hey, you should, you know, get into this. People go, what? I have to put something on my face. You know, yeah. all of that stuff is still the same, yeah, yeah. you know, like uh, sort of, uh, all you have to do is wear this slightly heavy thing on your face. So you can't see, and then exercise. Like it's just not a, I know, I know it's fun, but it's, it's a hard sell to get it's people a hard, to, it's a to really get over hard the top. Sell. And yeah. even if you, even if it's not an exercise thing, you just have a lot of people being like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to do that. I mean, you know, maybe I have, you know, I, I have eyeglasses issues, I, you know, putting something on my face, like that all is very, very, that's fair. Um, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, we are, we're going to get into an era when Apple releases the Vision Pro, where the conversation is going to change. I don't know exactly how. Well, that's it, the question, but it's right? Going how? To. How is it yeah. going to change? Because what Apple, what does Apple usually do? Let's take tablets. Tablets were like this. Tablets had been pushed by Microsoft. Uh, maybe they sold a few and then they declined and they declined and nobody wanted them. And everybody said, why would I want a tablet? Then Apple came out with the iPad. And what they did with the iPad is made it look fun. They made it look like something you'd want to try, and they made you feel like you were missing out if you didn't have one. Right. Uh, that's what they need to do with the Vision Pro. 
nobody looks at the quest three and thinks, man, I'm missing all the fun. You know, uh, it's, it's just, it's just not a thing that you see people do. And, and maybe I, we could try to figure out why, but it's just true. Apple's good at making things look really fun, look really cool, make you feel like you're missing out. And even if they don't get a bunch of people to spend $3,500, they will make people wish they could spend $3,500 if they do this right, which I don't know, maybe they won't this time, but that's usually what Apple does. Um, one of, uh, yeah, yes, uh, definitely true. I mean, $3,500, like, come on. I mean, even for like a Mac pro, like that, that's, you know, what, what the, we're talking about. The halo about effect of that, if they do it right, is everybody like, man, I wish I could get a vision pro, but I can't afford it. I guess I'll buy a $500 quest three. Cause at least I can afford that and feel like I have something well, in a, it, in, it in a does, sense where they wouldn't do that now. Start the the, yeah, the yeah. whole deal um you and that, that i think is what's going to be the most interesting thing apple will say we invented vr you know like we're the best we're the coolest um that's what apple does um everyone knows that's not true but maybe it does jumpstart um a whole ecosystem that is you know it, it's been around but it has been languishing yeah so. No, it's 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 almost ten years since the Oculus Rift, right? Like, we, this this is not early days. I wasn't even joking about that uh, earlier. So, uh, I do think I know this isn't our prediction show. We'll do that at the end of the month. But I do think that uh, this will be the last year of decline of VR headsets. I think we will see them at least flatten out next year. I don't think Apple's $3,500 headset's going to do it as far as turning things around, but it might, like you say, have that halo effect uh, and and spark some interest in, in the situation. And then you've got like ByteDance canceled its next version of the Pico because it wants to make something more like the Apple Vision Pro. Samsung's coming in w- with its mixed reality headset. So yeah. we're going to get more of that kind of stuff. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Jeff in Knoxville, Tennessee wrote in and said, on Monday's Quick Hits, you mentioned the rollout of fiber internet by the Knoxville Utility Board. Although I live slightly outside their service area, I can report it's done exactly what you would expect in terms of bringing competitive pricing to the area. I currently have one giga, uh, gigabyte, uh, gigabit fiber from a smaller telecom for $60 a month. And my power company, which services a much more rural area, is in the process of completing their fiber rollout in response. In the next few months, I may have access to at least two different gigabit fiber providers from my home. Oh, Jeff. I so we're moving you. to Tennessee is what yeah. the me. Uh, <laughs> right. But speak yeah. of the halo effect, right? That's what Jeff's describing is he's like, I'm not even in the area where they've rolled out the municipal fiber and it's already caused me to get fiber from other sources who were like, well, we better start offering it or, or we're going to be out, out of luck. So that's awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And I love that uh, we get a little on the ground report from somebody in Knoxville. That's cool. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, patrons stick around for the extended show. Good day internet. If you support this show directly, you not only get an ad free feed, you get more show. And Sarah and I are going to talk about the tech we want in 2024, what we're excited about, what we're hoping for. So stick around for that. Just a reminder, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We will be back doing it all again tomorrow. Scott Johnson joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>